Previously on the Osrin Tales Live D&D. Our heroes were ejected from the Plain of Water after winning a gladiatorial bout only to land beaten and bruised on the east coast beaches of Amirius. They take some time to heal up and rest in a small tower summoned by Tail and in the morning took a two-day journey to get back to the main road that stretches along the coast. The morning after they camped on the road, a broken monodrone came knocking at their door. The group fixed him up, he traded a few goods with them, and they asked him to join their group so they could protect him of any future dangers. Setting forth from their campsite, they traveled south, hoping to eventually intersect Amriel, the mysterious, maybe relative of Vilmars, who has the sword he has been seeking. They came across a deserted human village that had been destroyed many years ago and had been overrun by goblins for some time. However, when the group arrived, they discovered that all the goblins had mysteriously died and were decaying in the streets and houses. Our heroes spent the rest of the afternoon cleaning up the bodies and burning them. That night after dinner, Vilmar had another vision. Amriel was surrounded by imps and she spoke through the sword to him specifically. She had been having visions herself, visions of this exact moment. She begged him to help her against the shadowy foe, and Vilmar snapped out of his vision. He rushed out of Tail's summoned tower and ran back into the city to find Amriel. The group followed him and came to Amriel's aid, cutting down ten imps, all in the first volley of combat. Amriel asked Vilmar for the scabbard to the sword so she could change its element type, and once restored, the sword started performing some of its great power. The ability to change elemental damage at will. Once the imps were taken down, Shardor revealed himself, a ten-foot-tall fat devil with tusks and a giant-ass knife. He struck out at Vilmar, but missed horribly. Rowan then summoned a rhinoceros and calmed it down enough to ride it, and the combined might of our heroes and their new ally were much too much for Shardor, and he didn't live to attack them a second time. Once combat was over, Amriel healed some of the injured and showed Vilmar the truth of their relationship. By touching his forehead, she showed him a vision of his mother arguing with a man that he knew to be his uncle, even though his mother never talked about having an older brother much when Vilmar was growing up. The man left, and Vilmar's mother shed tears of anger and frustration about their argument. A flash forward in time, and Vilmar was now witnessing that same man, his uncle, older now, with his new daughter and his spouse. He had married a Deva, and Amriel was his daughter. Vilmar and Amriel were first cousins. As the pair were talking about the strange moment of meeting your cousin while killing a devil, a portal opened up and a small kobold stepped out, telling them that he had been looking for the group. It was one of Santex Loss's little helpers, here to take the group to meet the Nakam Dragon himself. Their group, their new companion, their Modron friend, and their new rhino all went through the portal to have a joyous Nakam meal with Santex Loss himself. How will Santa react to a rhino in his village? What presents will he have for our group? And what horrors inevitably await them in this, the final episode of Season 1? Find out now on the season finale of the Osrin Tales Live D&D.